Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking all about the JD and MBA program at the University of Buffalo. My name is Rebecca Mueller, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment for the School of Management, and I'm joined today by my counterpart over at the School of Law. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Kate Smodzik, and I'm the Manager for Recruitment and International Enrollment at the UB School of Law. Excellent. So you see our emails here. So please feel free to reach out if you've got any questions about this great combined degree opportunity um, with us. You can, can review us right there on your screen. So I'm going to have Kate get us started with talking a little bit about the JD and MBA, kind of the, inter the interdisciplinary approach. So the JD MBA is one of our oldest combined degree programs. It's a very well-established program here between uh, the UB School of Law and the UB School of Management. Um, it offers students the opportunity to graduate with two professional degrees in law and management, as well as an integrated approach to completing this degree in a four-year timeline. Uh, we also like to note that there are many advantages to this degree. It saves you time in the long run. It's very flexible. You get to meet with both networks, law as well as management. Of course, when you're saving time, you're also saving money. And you have the advantage of having a unique and marketable background. Excellent. So I'm going to first start about talking just about our MBA program specifically. So as I mentioned, while our focus will be on the dual JD MBA program, over the next few slides, we're going to be exploring really the foundation of the UB MBA experience, the highlights, and how you'll be able to gain the expertise that empowers a lifetime of personal, professional, and purposeful growth. And then I'll pass it back over to Kate, and she'll talk to you all about the School of Law. So in the School of Management, we're really aiming to maximize your return on investment with foundation building core courses and career targeted electives. So this curriculum has been developed with input from corporate recruiters, alumni, faculty, staff, and career experts. So our, our MBA core curriculum really focuses on a breadth of management courses to provide you with the skills and knowledge to be a successful manager in any industry. And during the MBA core year, uh, our students are really part of a diverse cohort as well as a small team. We're going to work together across all classes in the MBA. And in addition to the coursework and teamwork, most of our MBA students do choose to engage in some other action learning opportunities that we'll get to in a minute, like leader core, our global programs, case competitions, clubs, and more. Also noted here on the slide, you can see what the total hour requirement breakdown is between your law courses and your School of Management courses. Now, beyond the core curriculum of the MBA lies an opportunity to define your career goals and dive deeper through one of our nine concentrations. Our MBA graduates apply their learning as they connect theory and practice with a sense of purpose. So we currently offer analytics, finance, healthcare management, information assurance, information systems and e-business, international management, management consulting, marketing management, and operations and supply chain management. Now, it's important to note that some students will select one concentration, others will choose two, and some don't declare any concentration, and instead choose to take classes from various concentrations. And really, as a collaborative degree student, you're already setting yourself apart from the competition because you've got this great dual um, program opportunity. When it comes to action learning, our UB MBAs, they are doers. So the action learning component of our program really enables students to take advantage of a number of experiential learning opportunities. So one of these is our corporate champions. So only full-time UB MBA students can experience the Corporate Champions Program. This begins in your first semester in, in the uh, School of Management and is an extensive and powerful program that provides you with the practical opportunity to immediately apply your knowledge, positively impacting actual companies and community ecosystem. 
Corporate champions are representatives from organizations across Western New York who partner with teams of our UBMBA students to help strengthen the students' understanding of the world of business and their connection to it. Corporate champions also participate in multiple touch points with you and your team throughout the, the whole first semester of your UBMBA experience. So you're gonna really be able to benefit from the insights, learning lab environment, and access to senior leadership provided by the Corporate Champions Program and from the network of involved companies. Another great opportunity to explore is Leader Corps. So this program actually offers um, MBA Leader Corps certification as well as a micro-credential. So the award-winning MBA Leader Corps program is a selective personal and professional development journey that runs concurrently with your time in the UV MBA program. So through this, you'll be undergoing a rigorous assessment to really identify the competencies that you wish to strengthen, as well as creating a customized personal development plan for you. And then over the rest of your time, you're going to be working with a team of faculty, staff, external coaches, and alumni, really focusing on engaging in a learning environment, focus on theory, practical application, and personal experience that will help to prepare you for future leadership roles. So as an extension of action learning, our global programs are designed to immerse you into another culture. So through our faculty-led short-term global programs, you will prepare to lead in today's business world and develop the global mindset that you need to succeed in any industry. So you'll meet new people, visit businesses and cultural sites, and earn a micro-credential to showcase your experience to potential employers. And best of all, thanks to the hybrid nature of the global programs, you can participate from anywhere in the world. And all of our global experiences include a credit-bearing virtual program, as well as an optional travel to the program's destination. So our current global opportunities include international destinations in social innovation and entrepreneurial leadership in Africa, international business in Asia, social innovation and entrepreneurship in South America, and business in Central Europe. And in addition, there's actually domestic destinations through Experience of 50 that allow you to gain global perspective right here in the United, United States and explore various industries and really see how you can make an impact in cities across the country. When it comes to the Career Resource Center, they like to say to begin with the end in mind. So before you even set foot in a class, the CRC is engaged and committed to your success. The Career Resource Center is really just for UB School of Management students, so we have our own career team that is dedicated and passionate. They offer a variety of resources like lifelong career management through skills, um, workshops, and events. There's also tools to develop the competencies for winning interviews and access to a vast number and scope of employers. So our students really work with the Career Resource Center early on and often to help develop that career strategy and honing in the tools needed for an effective job search, really taking advantage of personal coaching, webinars and resources, and having access to local and national career fairs. So this gives you just a quick glance at the results from last year's graduating MBAs, kind of where some of them went, the percentage of them that were employed within three months of graduation, as well as the average amount of salary, both the high end as well as the lower end for that. So you can take a look and see kind of where our MBA students went. But with that being said, I'm now going to transition over to Kate, who will talk to you more about the School of Law opportunities. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm happy to share with you some here is how, how we facilitate the real world experiences at the School of Law. So UB is the only state university law school affiliated with the SUNY system. That's a very special um, thing that we like to tout as it means that we are the only law school in the state that's affiliated to the state. We are also among the strongest public law schools in the nation, and we offer a world-class center for disciplinary, interdisciplinary studies, um, which means that we have a lot right here at the university that potential law schools have access to, including division one research facilities, uh, very diverse faculty and staff, um, and many on-campus groups. So when we're thinking about law school, it's really important to have a framework of what this curriculum looks like. So the Juris Doctorate curriculum, JD, is 
theoretical in its approach, but also very intentional in delivering students with the skill set that will allow them to succeed in legal practice, as well as pass that bar exam. A very important aspect is being able to pass and earn the credentials to be a licensed attorney. So some of the important things that we focus on, especially in our skills program, are writing skills through our lawyer class, our trial advocacy technique classes, our trial advocacy competition program, non-litigation skills, appellate advocacy skills, academic support and professional development, just to name a few. And just as Rebecca mentioned, we also have concentrations in curricular programs. Just because you want to pursue a combined degree doesn't mean that you have to narrow your scope in the law to finance only. There are many concentrations and curricular programs available to you. You can choose one or you can choose to pursue a generalized JD. But currently we have nine concentrations and they range from advocacy to sports law, two particular um, concentrations that may be of interest if you are pursuing a combined degree program might be finance and development or perhaps intellectual property and privacy law. Um, but again, you have the entire breadth of the law school and the concentrations at your disposal, and you can choose to develop your own path to succeed at the law school. Another really important thing to consider when thinking about law school is what are some of the opportunities for you to be engaged specifically with practical hands-on experience? At the UB School of Law, we have nine current clinics that students can join to get hands-on real-world law experience under licensed professional attorneys. Several of these directly impact our local community, but they range based on a variety of specific interests and outcomes. So currently we offer clinics in animal law, civil rights and transparency, community engagement, criminal justice advocacy, entrepreneurial law, environmental advocacy, family violence and women's rights, mediation, and we have a clinic for Puerto Rico recovery assistance. Another aspect to experiential learning are externships and internships. So this slide gives a brief overview of all of our recent placements in terms of externships. So you can see we have a wide breadth of externships that have been available in the past to our University of Buffalo School of Law students, including government externships, both locally and across the state, including US Immigration and Customs at the federal level. We also have placements in courts federal, state, county, and city-wide, as well as academic opportunities and in specific legal services, such as the Center for Elder Law and the Neighborhood Legal Services. And again, this is just a brief snippet of some of these opportunities with such a wide variety of networks available to the University of Buffalo School of Law students. This is just a tiny sample. There are so many opportunities available. So we also want to let you know about what does it look like to actually be a School of Law student? How do you engage with your classmates and your future colleagues? So we like to say that the University of Buffalo School of Law is a collaborative environment. We are all here to encourage each other to succeed. And because of that, we also have lots of opportunities for engagement with student associations and very specific um, student-based programming. So we have three law journals that students can become involved with. We also have moot and mock trials. So we have currently five different moot court and mock trial organizations. And we have a plethora of student organizations 
including the Black Law Students Association, the Buffalo Public Interest Law Program, and the Domestic Violence Task Force, just to name a few. Another really important thing to think about as you're thinking about law school is, what kind of job am I going to get when I'm done? So we like to take some of the stress out of that for you and start with your planning very early into your journey at the University of Buffalo School of Law. We too have a dedicated career services office. This means that combined program students have the best of both worlds and that they have two offices working to get them the best jobs. Career service advising is built directly into your program. So you meet with a career service advisor in the winter of your first term. Some of the things that career service focuses on are individual career counseling, student interviews to help you prepare for those summer internships, and jobs once you're done. They also help you with online job postings, setting you up with mentors both professionally and academically. They set up a number of career panels and programs throughout the academic years. They also connect students to public defenders job fairs and annual career fairs. So some of our most recent outcomes in terms of these combined degree students include local and national employments. So you can see that we've had successful placements across the country with many major named organizations and institutions. And there's just a few here that are worth noticing. Um, such as federal placements like the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, as well as some local favorites like Rich Products and M&T Bank. Okay, so now that you've heard a little bit about both schools, we want to talk a little bit about what the JD MBA admissions uh, process is like. So one of the first things that's really important to know is that you actually must submit separate applications and be admitted to both the School of Law and the School of Management in order to do this combined degree program. Now for MBA admissions, you must submit either the GMAP or the GRE. For law admissions, you must submit either the, either the LSAT or the GRE. So we also recommend that you apply for both programs in the same admission cycle and really trying to plan for a full MBA year before your first full law year. But for a specific program and timeline and curriculum, you'll want to talk to you know either myself or Kate in regards to what that specific um, program is going to look like for you. Now, if you're admitted to both degree programs, you would tend to take the MBA core and elective courses first before enrolling in law courses. Then after completing your first year of the MBA program, you'll enroll in law, completing your remaining MBA electives and capstone during your remaining law years, um, as mentioned earlier, for a total of four years altogether. Now, when it comes to just the MBA admissions process, there's going to be a couple of things that we want to make you aware of. So we actually have a lot of different application um, deadlines, if you will. So there's uh, applications have been open since July 1st. We have October 15th, December 1st, February 1st, April 15th, and June 1st. It doesn't really matter when you get your application in. These are just the, the deadlines in which we, we tend to review rounds. Important ones to consider is that February 1st is the priority deadline for applicants that are applying for program scholarships, assistantships, and fellowships. February 1st is also going to be that final deadline for international applicants. And June 1st, you want it to be uh, as a final deadline for domestic applicants or current UB F1 visa holders um, can also wait to apply to June 1st. But we really encourage folks to try and get their applications in and completed before February 1st. So when it comes to the application process itself, you're going to be submitting your application through the application status portal. So you do that right on our website. And you really want to try and complete your application within 30 days of starting it. Just makes it a little bit easier to get your application moving. Applications must be completed and, and all documents uploaded by the deadline in order to be considered for any given round. Incomplete applications will not be reviewed. So make sure that you are uploading the proper documentation, you are, are removing any password protection from any documents that may have it, 
and do not send any materials by mail or email as they will be discarded. So you really have to use the, the, the application portal there to get your application materials uploaded. There is an application uh, fee of $100. There's also for the GMAT and GRE, as you heard me mention earlier, uh, we do accept both of those um, exams. And in addition to the, the, the traditional exams, we'll also accept the online or at-home versions. And if you're submitting either a GMAT or GRE score report, please know that scoring in, in the 30th, 30th percentile is considered to be competitive. And there are going to be some GMAT GRE waiver criteria that we have as well, which I'll cover those details in the next slide. Uh, but other things that you need to worry about is your personal statement. There's going to be two personal statements that you need to do for the MBA. And there are specific uh, questions that you can see right on our website as to what, the, what those um, topical responses need to be about. There's also a resume that you need to include your uh, any relevant education or work experience that you have, as well as months and years of employment. You do not need to have any employment in order to be considered for an MBA program, but if you do have it, please include that on your resume. There's also the transcripts, so you should be uploading transcripts for each college or university that you list in your application. We do need transcripts for all undergraduate credits, including your transfer credits. Earn portal undergraduate degree needs to be uploaded. And ideally, we like to see a GPA of about a 3.0 or better on a 4.0 scale. So all of these components are required as the admissions committee will use them in their holistic review of your entire profile to really gain a better understanding of you both quantitatively and qualitatively. So kind of going through real, real quick, I'm not going to focus too much on this because all of this can be found on our website. And you can always email me if you have specific, specific questions. But when it comes to the GMAT GRE, if you happen to have at least two years of um, post-bachelor's full-time work experience, as well as falling into one of these boxes down here where it talks about, depending on what your undergraduate degree was, if you have a doctorate degree or, or certain professional certifications, you can get your application, or so you can get your GMAT or GRE test um, waived. When it comes to if you don't have that, that uh, full-time work experience, that's okay too. We will review expired GMAT, GRE, SAT, or ACT scores as long as you're in the 75th percentile and you meet the certain criteria that is listed below as well. Again, this is only for the School of Management um, that, that will allow you to waive your GMAT or GRE. We also do not do this waiver until everything's been submitted, your application fee has been paid, just because we do get a, a quite a few influxes of applications. So we do not do this review until everything is submitted. Now, our international applicants, there's a couple other pieces that you need to consider when doing your application. If you fall into this, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to go into detail with you as far as what these pieces are. But some of the most important pieces for you to be aware of is that we do not require a WES or ECE evaluation. If you have one of those, great, but it is not required. We will do the conversion to a 4.0 scale on our end if needed. When it comes to tuition and funding, just for the MBA program, um, you're kind of looking here at what your in-state resident charges is. This is just for, for year one uh, versus your non-resident non charges. You also want to be aware that these are subject, subject to change, so utilize our student accounts website for the most up-to-date information um, regarding tuition and fees. So I'm going to pass it back over and to have Kate talk about JD admissions. Sure. So we're going to give a quick overview of JD admissions. We want you to be as prepared as possible when you're planning your application and be well aware of timelines and things that you need to have to complete your application. So in order to be eligible for admission, you have to have the equivalent of a bachelor's degree and you have to have either an LSAT score or a GRE score. Since you may already have your GRE for your MBA, you don't have to worry about having an LSAT. That would cover our admissions as well. Uh, don't think that you have to sit for both exams. We do accept either or. Um, we also have all of our applications come in through the LSAC organization. So you'll have to make an LSAT account at LSAC.org. You will submit all of your official transcripts directly to LSAC, and they will be compiled as part of your application documents. We're also going to be looking for letters of recommendation, two to three. Usually these are from the academic setting, but if you've also worked in a professional context, you're free to submit 
professional recommendations from supervisors or leaders in your uh, professional industry who have worked with you directly. Another very important component to your application is your personal statement. We want to see a personal statement that tells us who you are and why you want to study with us. We're also going to be looking for that professional resume. So that's another overlap with that MBA application. You don't have to have done any work outside of school. However, it's a good opportunity to share all of your affiliations within school, any internships or professional experience that you may have. And if you have a long and robust history of work, that also is something we factor in when we're reviewing you for admission. So I mentioned this previously, but you're going to start by creating your free LSAC account. This is so that you can upload all of those documents to begin to prepare your application dossier. It is fairly simple. You just have to visit LSAC.org and follow the prompts accordingly. Another thing to think about is what is the timeline for admission? Where do I need to be in terms of preparing my applications, submitting things on time, and making sure that I have a sense of how and when to apply for all of the financial aid and any scholarships. So our application goes live on September 1st. That means that you can submit your application as early as September 1st. If you wanted to commit early, to University of Buffalo, you would be welcome to submit an early decision application. This is a binding application. So if you submit this application, you are indicating that UB is it for me and that you will be joining should you be offered admission. A couple other things that are important to note is that we have a recommended deadline of March 1st. However, we are on a rolling basis, which means that it's not a hard deadline, but if you wait, you may not have any more seats available. So the earlier you apply, the better, and more likely there are seats for you to join our university. We also like to note that if you are considering housing, housing deadline is May 10th. And if you are thinking of transferring, our deadline is July 1st. So when you're thinking about law school, it's really important to think about some of the metrics and how you compare to some of our previous classes that we have welcomed. Last fall, we welcomed 141 students to the class of 2026. A few very important numbers that you may want to consider are our LSAT median, which was a 156. So this is our median score for the incoming class of 2026. That is the 25th to 75th percentile, roughly around a 153 to a 159. That would have been what most of our applicants fell into. Another thing that's important to think about is that GPA. So we did have a pretty strong GPA for the class of 2026 at a 3.72. However, don't let these numbers scare you and don't self-select out. Just because you're a little bit nervous about your numerics doesn't mean that you should not apply. With a holistic review process, we are looking at every document in your application, and there might be something special about you that catches the admissions committee's eye. So don't let the numbers be the only thing that guides your application. We really want to know who you are and what you would gain by joining our community and what we would gain as well. So these are just kind of a guideline as you're preparing that application. So housing is also very important. As you're so busy into programs, it is helpful to just know where you're gonna be and have easy access to our facilities. So there are professional housing opportunities right on campus within walking distance to both the School of Management as well as the School of Law. And we are conveniently neighbors on campus. So two things to note um, as we are talking about housing are Flint Village and Creekside Village, both very accessible to both of our buildings right on the North Campus. Um, however, you can choose to live wherever is convenient to you with off-campus options as well. Okay, so 
It's also important to think about what kind of financial investment is needed to pursue this degree. So because we are a state school, if you are a New York State resident, you benefit from the New York State resident tuition. This year, the New York State resident tuition is around $26,000 plus fees. If you're an out-of-state resident, it's still quite affordable at around $31,000. Um, and there's some important um, work, study, and loan options on the right side of this as well. But also these are found in depth on our website. So don't feel like you have to get and digest all of this information right now. Um, another really important thing to note is there are scholarships available. About 89% of our incoming class this fall had a scholarship. So that's a very high odds that you could have a scholarship as well if you are offered admission. We also really encourage you to take advantage of talking to our current student ambassadors um, I know uh, from the MBAs, I've been able to current student ambassadors as well as alumni ambassadors. Um, we have quite a few of them. So please feel free to scan these QR codes here and, and reach out to both MBA and law student ambassadors as they kind of getting the experience hearing from a current student is really, really powerful. You know, Kate and I are always here to answer any questions that you have about the admissions process, about the programs. But to get the student perspective, we definitely encourage you to reach out to our ambassadors. That being said, that really concludes today's presentation. So thank you so much for hearing all about what our combined JD MBA program has to offer. And we hope to see your application soon. And again, our contact information is right here on this slide. So thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.